Today, we're going to analyze this stock and see whether right now is a good time to invest in the company for the long term. First, let's see if there's a good business behind the stock. We'll look at 14 metrics as we compare its business against those that make up the S&P 500. The first set of metrics deal with the company's financial health, with its projected earnings growth for the next five years, its profit margins, its effectiveness, which looks at the company's returns on equity, assets, and invested capital, and then the employee value, which looks how much value the average employee adds to the business. You can see the values for each of these metrics, as well as the point totals awarded in the bubbles. The next set of metrics looks at the investment opportunity afforded to shareholders. Here we get the dividend yield, its payout ratio, which is how much of the company's earnings are going out to pay shareholders, and the cash and cash equivalent the company has in order to pay dividends, reinvest, and off the debts it has on its books. Again, you can see the values for each metric as well as the points given for each. This third set of metrics deals with the valuation of the company's stock based on its business. Think of the P ratio as a measure of speculation around the stock. We want them low. The PEG ratio adds earnings growth with the P ratio. Then the 200-day simple moving average is the average stock price over that period. We want that low because it means we have a cheaper stock price. And then short float is basically how bearish other investors think of the stock. For these four metrics, we want the values to be as low as possible. That will give us a higher point total within the bubbles. And the fourth set of metrics look into other relevant data. First is the stock's performance over a set period of time. Usually it's 10 years, but if the stock doesn't go that far back, we go with the earliest data up to 10 years. The quick ratio is basically how easy it is for the business to pay off its short-term obligations. We want that high so that's easy to get rid of those debts. And then Wall Street is the average consensus rating Wall Street analysts give the stock, from a strong buy of 1 to a strong sell of 5. Again, the better values get a higher point total. Adding everything together, we divide the points awarded by the maximum points possible, which is 70. That gives us the business grade for the company, as well as the S&P 500 as a comparison. We want the business grade to be above 50, but more importantly, we want a business grade that's better than the S&P 500. But of course, we can't forget about the fair price and whether it's the right time to buy the stock. I use a discounted cash flow model taking into account a 10% margin of safety. That translates into the company's fair price and how many percentage points above or below its current price the stock is. When we compare those numbers with the table below, we can see where the company's stock lies in its intrinsic value spectrum right now. Before we get to the final grade, join my Patreon and get access to every company I've analyzed so you can compare between all your favorite stocks. It's updated all the time. Go to patreon.com slash growthshares or click on the link in the description. Finally, we can put everything together and they get the company's final grade. Adding the business grade and the fair price grade, we can see here the company's final grade. Anything less than 50 means it's not a good long-term investment. A final grade above 50 means it would make a good long-term investment if you bought the stock right now. So what are your thoughts? Are you going to invest? If you do, invest wisely. And as always, take care of your money.